Hello. Today I'm going to do some more of the structural work in the shady garden. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. Since I started this garden about a month ago, uh, I've put in this pallet fence, uh, complete with a compost heap there, uh, and put in a, a couple of larger plants and I've also created this wildlife pond. So I started by removing the turf and kind of marking out an area, just using my spade and dug that down a bit and then uh, dug down some more to create a, a shelf. I made the central bit a little bit deeper. So I've just uh, lined the pond uh, with some fleece. I'm saying I've done it, I haven't actually. Um, Danny from the Great Vine Allotment has uh, kindly come here today and has been helping me with this. Uh, so exciting, uh, we're just about to start getting that pond liner actually in and the fleece uh, hopefully will just protect it from, uh, from any stones that are sticking out of it and also just to reduce the amount of cold or heat, uh, just, it'll insulate it. And he really kindly uh, brought me this plastic uh, pond liner that he didn't need. Um, so we put that in, filled it up with water and then over the next couple of days um, I brought up these stones, placed them uh, all around the edges to hold the liner in place but also to provide hiding spaces for wildlife. Uh, and then it put smaller stones around the edges and then last week uh, Tony from Tony's Gizmos and Gadgets came over and uh, he brought me uh, this pea shingle which he had uh, left over from a project so we've put it around the outside and then going into the pond which gives wildlife particularly uh, frogs and toads a chance to climb up into the pond and down but it also means that if anything else falls into the pond it has the ability to scrabble out again. As yet uh, there's no further sign of life in here I need to get in some pond plants and, and then just wait and hope that the wildlife come. I found this lovely uh, figure hiding under a hedge near our house. Uh, I hadn't realised how much concrete <laughs> really weighed. That was a, a no mean feat to uh, carry this over, but I'm very pleased. Uh, it looks nice here. And what it's actually doing is holding these stones, uh, these flat stones here. Uh, there is a, a water outlet for, as an overflow section that just runs straight underneath this and then uh, goes off into the field down there. This very lovely cordial line uh, we brought with us, uh, well I was going to say from our old house, but actually we were given these just before we moved uh, by a local resident who had four or five of them in his front garden. They had completely outgrown their space, so he was taking them out and he advertised uh, on a Facebook uh, gardening group that I was a member of, did anybody want them? Well, I couldn't get there fast enough to be honest. <laughs> I absolutely love cordialines and I love the maturity and how it kind of adds some, some instant height uh, to this brand new garden space. And then here, uh, already uh, a slight victim of the wind, uh, this is a cherry. Uh, this is uh, it's a flowering cherry rather than a fruiting one. It's a Japanese flowering cherry and it's called snow goose. Um, it's going to have uh, white flowers all over it. I'm really excited. Now I'm just looking at it. It has uh, got itself a very jaunty angle and I don't know whether that's the wind that's knocked it over or whether I didn't plant it quite straight. I can't imagine I planted it at such a wonky angle and yeah it's moving. I can lift it quite a lot so I think I need to come back through and really firm this in more appropriately. I'm going to leave it as it is now. I'll get Mr. J to come and give me a hand. We're going to stake this as well uh, and make sure that that is perpendicular. The next couple of jobs I have to do, uh, one is to put in a, a row of hedging along here. Now I've got some hornbeam plants and in fact uh, last week I planted um, along this fence uh, all the way down to the very far end uh, with hornbeam hedging in the food forest. 
I want to carry that on through here and all the way down through the veg garden as well. Last month I saw a really neat way of putting hedging plants in. Uh, you cut uh, across into the, the ground with your uh, spade and then you put it in at an angle and kind of lever it up and it opens the soil up enough for you to put uh, your tree roots in and then as you take your spade out again it all kind of closes up around the tree roots and then you just firm it in with your foot and even on my own uh, that's taking around 30 seconds per tree to actually get them planted so uh, I'll be coming along here shortly to do that and the other thing I want to do is to put in uh, a couple of currant bushes here sort of to mark the end uh, of the garden so it's only going uh, to the end of the polytunnel here uh, this area uh, I will be working on later in the week. Um, here I'm going to put down uh, some sort of solid base for a shed. I'm going to put a small shed there uh, with a composting loo in it uh, for when I'm, <laughs> when I'm working uh, outside uh, and also for when we hold courses here. If you'd like to see uh, those courses that we're offering at the moment, uh, do head over to buythefarm.com and I'll leave a link in the video description. So there will be a shed uh, here, which hopefully will act as a little bit of a windbreak. Um, I'm, I do need to put in some sort of hedging along there because I want to try and slow down the movement of the wind uh, as it comes along here. And at the moment uh, it hits that polytunnel and goes up and out. So the wind that would normally uh, go that way is then <laughs> funneled around this side, which I think you can see uh, makes it fairly windy here. So the more that I can do to slow the wind down uh, through this section, the better. So there'll be a shed, uh, then there'll be some currant bushes, there'll be the hedging along that side. We've got the polytunnel along there. This really is going to be quite a shady garden, but that means there's masses of opportunities to plant some really interesting plants in here. So here is uh, a black currant that I've brought with me. I'm fairly sure it's a black currant. Now I couldn't tell the difference until uh, one of you kindly told me that if you rub the stem and smell your hands, if it smells uh, of currants, then it's a black currant. Uh, if it doesn't smell, then it could be a white or a red currant. So I've brought this with me uh, from our old place, grew it from a cutting. Um, it's, it's quite crossed over branches here and there. Uh, some that are working their way towards the middle so after I've planted it uh, I'm going to prune this so it's got a nice open shape and I've decided I'm only going to be planting one in here because actually they take up quite a good space and by the time the hedging has filled out there uh, then I put the black currant in here I think uh, that will be enough boy it is windy today <laughs> <laughs> I think that will be uh, enough of a plant here. So I'm going to make a hole here for it to go in. Um, I'm going to put it so that it's kind of in line-ish with the end of the polytunnel. So I've cut, uh, I've cut around there. Here we go. I'm going to make it a little bit deeper uh, because I can see that uh, the root ball is going to be a bit bigger than that. You can hear there are a few stones in the soil but it's nowhere near as stony as our last, our last home and uh, for that I'm incredibly grateful. One of the things that I really need to check with this root ball uh, is that we don't have any vine weevil larvae in here. I've noticed an awful lot of our plants uh, have got uh, vine weevil. These are the ones that were stored near the front of our house. Um, and I can't remember uh, where I stored this when we first moved here. So I'm going to lift this out and have a look. Luckily, uh, I can't see any, which I'm very pleased about. Let's pop that in there. That wasn't terribly elegant, but there we go. And I'm aiming to get this at about the same height um, as the soil around it, or maybe even a tiny bit higher. And I've got, at the moment, most of the branches are 
growing in that direction which I think is probably what I want. I think once I have uh, pruned this and tidied it up uh, that would be great. So oh, first piece I pick up is a great big stone. Uh, those stones aren't going to waste, uh, they're going around the pond. So I'm trying to fill uh, all the gaps uh, around the root ball um, with the same soil that came out of that space. And then uh, with the remainder of the grass, I'm keeping it uh, upturned so that the uh, light is excluded from the growing grass. And uh, I'm just putting it around to fill in the additional spaces. Now it doesn't matter that uh, this soil uh, is touching the stems. In fact, what it will do is encourage it to produce more roots uh, from the stems and that will anchor it into place even better. Now watering it in is less about actually giving it a drink than um, making sure that the, all the root ball is in contact with the soil. So by applying water to it, that will push and uh, wash the soil next to the roots. Uh, this root ball was really uh, very wet. We've had a lot of rain uh, in the last few days. The ground is very moist, so it's not, it's certainly not about giving it a drink. It is about ensuring uh, that the soil is in contact with the root ball. So I now need to continue uh, along this other half but one of the things that I did spot when I was uh, rootling around in the food forest was some pond plants. I brought these with us uh, from our old house, they are irises and they're in a basket that allows uh, the water to go in and out and <laughs> as you can see for their roots to come through. Now these could really do with being divided and put into two maybe even four plant pots uh, to go in here but for now I'm going to get them in and uh, I won't put them uh, too deeply into the water uh, because I do know that I will want to uh, lift those and divide them at some point. But I'm really pleased to have got uh, the first lot of plants into the pond this time six years ago and I was also planting hedges at our previous uh, home and a year ago this month uh, my first book Grounded was published which tells the story of uh, setting up our homestead in our previous home and I'm having a month-long celebration of that uh, so over on my website uh, if you are in the UK you can buy uh, a signed copy uh, of Grounded with 20% off I'm really sorry that I can't offer that uh, for international purchases. I just haven't quite got my head around all of the new uh, customs information yet. But you can still buy it uh, online uh, with booksellers uh, and auction houses and also have permanent publications. I'm hoping that this is going to look very lovely along here uh, in two or three years time. These little hedging plants should have grown quite a bit by then and just on the outside of this fence uh, I've planted a vast number of daffodils and I've also got some little snowdrops uh, which I'm going to plant on the outside of this wire netting but on the inside of the rabbit netting so it'll go down there so hopefully there will be snowdrops very early in the year and then uh, daffodils by which time the uh, hedging will have come back into leaf Hopefully this will all look very lovely.